Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Third point. Women need emotional security. We mentioned earlier that a man always feels the need to provide for his family, primarily financially. And alhamdulillah, that's a great and necessary thing. But what most men don't realize is that for women, they are more in need of emotional security than financial. What this translates into is that when the husband is working long hours in the office, he feels he's doing a really good job taking care of his wife. He's working his behind off to give her what she deserves. However, from her perspective, she is saying, my husband's rarely home. Perhaps, you know, he doesn't have that connection with me. Perhaps he's not as close to me as he should be. Perhaps he doesn't love me enough. Subhanallah. Many men, they tend to assume that just because uh, women like to shop, they are more materialistic than men. But the fact of the matter is that the average woman would value a strong and good emotional relationship with a poor husband over an insecure relationship with a rich husband. In one study, almost 90% of women surveyed said that they would prefer a man who took a lower paying job if he spent more time in the house. Think about that brothers. A woman, 90% of women said they would rather prefer a husband has a lower income, less money if he spends time at home. So the husband needs to work to develop that sense of security in a woman, the emotional security, just as he's got to work to ensure financial security. You have to work to ensure emotional security. Husbands, men, never assume that just because you're paying the bills, and just because you have a big house, and just because you're taking care of the financial needs, and just because you're having sex with her at night, that you are showing her emotional security. Emotional security is not dependent on these factors. How do you show her emotional security? By the small things. Keeping in touch regularly, texting her, calling her from the office, making time for her, quality time every evening or every week spending some time with her being an active part of your household communicating opening up to her even if you're working long hours remind her that honey this is for you you know this is for for the future of the children talk 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 and you know what there is a compromise as well perhaps she does have a point perhaps you are spending too much time in the office realize that your, husband, your, your, your family, your wife, your children, they have a right over you as well, as do their finances. Try to find that middle balance. But the bottom line, emotional security. A woman needs to be reminded that she's loved, she's cherished, she's appreciated. And the fourth point. A man needs to know that what a woman really wants is... a partner and a friend. For a woman, the ideal husband is her best friend. And for a man, that's not necessarily the case, is that he might have a best friend and his wife is not his best friend. That sometimes happens. For a man, he can love his wife to death, but she's not con considered her best friend. He needs to realize if he wants his wife to genuinely love him, she does need to become his best friend. For a woman, the ideal husband is a best friend. And what is a best friend? Well, a best friend is somebody who's going to listen with care, who's going to pay attention, who's going to sympathize. And really, uh, and we've been saying this from the very beginning, and this is uh, probably the most common point that is brought up in all books dealing with uh, the differences between men and women. And that is that women want to connect on an emotional level. Simple example of this, men and women talk for different reasons. When a man discusses a problem, he wants to speak as little as possible. He doesn't want somebody to listen for a long period of time. He wants somebody to solve the problem. He's not looking for sympathy. He's not looking for a, a shoulder to cry over. He's looking for solutions. He wants an answer. 
So he's going to go to somebody whom he looks up to for knowledge, for inspiration. He's going to say, you know, this happened to me. And they'll be silent. And he'll want a response. Well, you know what? You should do da, 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 da. That's exactly why he's speaking. Now, when a woman comes to her husband and she expresses a problem, he naturally goes into man mode, which means he talks as little as possible and he offers direct, explicit solutions to the problem. Well, you shouldn't have done that. You should do that. This is a mistake and this is your solution. This is not the way to deal with the issue. It's a big mistake. The impression you're giving her is that you're brushing aside her concerns. Next time you're in the company of two women, suppose your sister and wife, suppose your mother uh, and her friend, next time you're in the company of two women, just pay attention to what they talk about and how they communicate, how long they dwell on the same topic, how they seem to say the same things over and over and over again. For a man, it's very frustrating. But for a woman, they'll say the same thing and she will say it and she will say it and she will say it and a conversation will go which for a man would have taken two minutes, might last 20 minutes amongst women. For a guy, it's frustrating. But you know what? That's because you're thinking in male mode, in guy mode. For women, this is their language of communication. A woman wants somebody who will listen to her, sympathize with her, empathize with her. This is how a woman solves a problem. By talking about the issues with the people that she loves, by allowing her emotions to come out and to come out and to come out and to have those emotions recognized by those whom she loves, by her listeners. For women, it's not that the issue is bothering them. It's the emotions that the issue has generated. Men are different. Men don't talk about the emotions. Men they want to ignore that. It was embarrassing. It was No, they want to ignore that. They want to talk about the issues. For women, it's the emotions. I felt hurt. I felt uh, humiliated. I felt this is the point. And she wants the sympathy. Believe it or not, husbands, for many issues not offering a solution to your wife as she's discussing it through will actually make her feel that you're genuinely there for her. You're sympathizing with her. You're listening to her with the care and the attention and the sympathy that her problems deserve. And of course, this is where it does get complicated for men because frankly, and I'll be very honest here, men find it very difficult to listen to these types of conversations for that long. Something that they would say in two minutes, a woman might say in 10 or 20 minutes, and it's very frustrating. And that is why inherently, after two minutes, they just turn off. And this is a problem. So the TV is on, and the wife is going on about it, and on and on about a problem she's having, and the husband will pretend to pay attention. Uh-huh, yes, uh-huh. And, and assume that he's doing his job. I'm afraid that there's just no getting around it. Husbands, you're going to have to learn to listen. And I mean genuinely listen. That means turn off the television. Give her your full undivided attention. If you can't do it at that time, tell her, honey, I really need to finish this news. If we can talk over, uh, about this over dinner at eight o'clock, whatever the time might be, that's the time we'll do it. And then honor your commitment. But you have to give her time. and. You have to simply sit there and listen. And another way is when she's finished talking, ask her, do you want me to uh, uh, give you a solution or do you want to think about it for a while? Because husbands genuinely are confused because husbands want to go into solve problem mode. They don't have empathize mode. They just want to solve the issue right then and there. And they don't realize for women, it might not even be that they want uh, the problem to be solved. They just want sympathy. They just want a shoulder to cry on. They just want an, a, a friend to understand what happened to them. And so they genuinely need to sit there and listen to their wives uh, uh, about the issues that happened to them. Another way is to understand that your job as a man is not to try to talk them out of your feelings. It's not to try to talk them out of the way they felt, but merely to sympathize with those feelings and to understand those feelings. Whatever you do, don't tell her she's overreacting. Don't tell her she's over-emotional. Don't ever tell her she's going through PMS. These are just big no-nos. You don't do that. Don't tell her that you, know, you shouldn't be feeling this way. Don't question her side of the story. Just listen. Try to see it from her perspective. And after she's done, then ask her, do you want to think of, do you want me to help you think of a solution? And always sympathize with her. So for example, if she was hurt, just hug her, hold her hand and say, 
yeah, that must have been very painful, or how could she have done that? Just sympathize, that's the first stage. Problem solving will come, but the first thing you have to do is to be a friend to your wife, and that's something that, honestly, men do find very difficult, but if you want a genuine relationship with your wife, you're going to have to learn to be friends with them, to be companions with them, to open up to be a genuine life partner.